Dick Powell in Detective's Holiday. minutes if you left and you said you were going three hours and seven minutes <laughs> thought it'd never get you up here dave how long you go to stay oh until i'm rested completely rested tired bushed yeah big city strain all that noise rushing about and steel racetrack you know doctors down there make a fortune just telling people to take things easy had one up here last month exhausted wouldn't listen to the doctors huh wouldn't listen <laughs> he was one of the doctors <laughs> i got a place for you to stay good back in the hills a bit yeah, a young fella and his wife, Esau and Doris Hepburn. A couple of kids, good hunting, a nearby a fishbowl stream. And no telephone. That's for me. <laughs> oh, uh, what'd you tell them about me? Nothing. Just a fella from the city and a friend of mine. That's the way you wanted it? That's the way I want it. Keep that for me, will you? Yeah, sure. You follow me out and I'll show you the way. Good. Like it? Ah, it's a picture book. Nothing here to think about except nothing. Where's your luggage? In the back. Hey, Tom! Hi, Tom! Hi, Tom! Here they are. David Crockett and Daniel Boone. This is John. This is Maddie. This is Dave Robinson. Hi, Hi. boys. Hi. Where's your pop? Inside. All right. Hey, pop, it's Doc. Hey, pop, it's Doc and our new border. Doris? How are you, Doc? Uh, hello, Esau. Dave Robinson, he's all Hepburn. Hello, Mr. Hepburn. Welcome, Mr. Robinson. Thank nice you. See, you met the boys. Yeah, I have a feeling if I stick with them, I'll find all the game is hidden in the mountains. <laughs> oh, here's the missus. Doris Hepburn, Dave Robinson. How do you do, Mr. Robinson? Welcome to our home. Thank you, Mrs. Hepburn. Very nice of you to put me up here. I'll try to be as little bother as possible. How long are you going to stay? Yeah. Shh, boys, boys, take, take Mr. Robinson's bag to his room. I want the big one. No, you're not. Here, 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 here. Come take. on now, come on. Going. It's a little wild up here in the morning, Mr. Robinson. I hope you're not a late sleeper. Oh, I'm going to like it here, I'm sure. I'm very grateful to you. Well, I have something on the stove. Excuse me. Well, i got to be getting back up to the office. I'll take these, Doc. Say goodbye to Doris for me, will you? I will. Excuse me, I'll go walk to the car with Doc. What's the matter? He saw he's a policeman. What's he doing here? A policeman? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. I know it. I've seen or his picture or something. So what are we going to do? Nothing. You're not sure, and until you are, we can't do anything. Come on, take it easy. Seem like nice people. Yeah, best. Wonderful boys. Sure are. Doris isn't their real mother. He saw his wife died several years ago. He met Doris last year on a trip to the city. Fell in love with her, married law. Yeah, they wanted me to step into the district attorney's office next year as assistant. Well, what's the matter with that? Nothing. Just haven't made up my mind yet. One of the reasons I took a vacation, if you didn't think about it. You think a vacation is nothing but to hurry off to someplace else, take all your problems with you, and think about them in different surroundings. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to rest. I'm going to do a little fishing, a little hunting, a lot of sleeping, a lot of eating, and do a little thinking on the side. There, you see there? You're plumb wore out with work and worry. If you don't stop everything, you're gonna crack up good. You drop in my office tomorrow. I'll give you a couple of pills and some more advice. Okay, Doc, I'll do just that. Take it easy. You bet. Thanks, Thanks for bringing me up. Hmm? I like the feel of this one. You handle it well. Put another shell in, and when you're ready, just holler, pull. How fast does a quail fly? Oh, just about like that. 
Hey, you don't shoot like a city fella. I'll tell you a little secret. When I found out in the service you got time off for top score, I became an expert. Pull! Must have kept in practice. Pull! Not even be in the sporting good business, huh? <laughs> One of them gun manufacturers? Pull! Might even own a shooting gallery, but I don't. Pull! Sure I can't warm up your coffee, Mr. Robinson? Well, no, thanks. Maybe you'd like something stronger. Oh, no, thank God. Perfectly happy just to sit here in front of the fire. Say, boys. You ever notice how the flames make pictures? I just saw the monster with two big horns. See him in the corner there? Ah. Uh, oh, he's gone. You know, the Indians used to tell fortunes by watching the flames dance. Tell my fortune. The only trouble is that if they didn't like the fortune, they always threw the fortune teller into the fire. I promise not to. Ah, oh, quiet. Matty, you're so tired now, you can't keep your eyes open. He doesn't have trouble keeping his mouth open. Are oh, you? Hey, watch it. Tell my mommy's fortune. <laughs> Looks like I got myself into something, huh? All right, Maddie, I'll uh, tell your mommy's fortune. I'll look in the fire, both of you go on. There, yeah, see? There's a tall flame with light hair standing next to a little boy. Mommy didn't always have light hair. Hey. Oh, Maddie, don't tell your mommy secrets. What's wrong with changing hair? It doesn't hurt the fortune, does it, Dave? Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson. Oh, I shouldn't think so. Kids are the darnest, I tell you. You see, two years ago, when Doris and I got married, well, we thought kids being blonde... And... It wasn't two years ago, Daddy. You brought Mommy back from the city only a little over a year ago. Yeah! Well, now you have Mr. Robinson so confused you couldn't tell anybody's fortune. Oh, come on, Mr. Robinson. What do you see that's going to happen? Well, I'll tell you one thing about it. Fortunes, Matty. If you're going to look ahead happily, you've got to make sure you never have to look back. Boy, I wish I could tell fortunes. Well, you could if you knew the secret of the fortune teller. What's the secret of the fortune teller? Well, uh, the moment you start to tell somebody's fortune, they tell you. All right, boys, time for bed. Oh, come on, come on. Kiss your mom. Good night. I'll tuck him in. Good night, boys. Come on. Bye. Good night. I'll take the dishes away. Hi, Doc. Howdy, Dave. How you been? Can't complain. Gotta make a little long distance call, do you mind? Oh, go right ahead. Help yourself. How are you getting along? Oh, fine, fine. Got a little headache. Have you, you got a couple of aspirins? Sure, I'll get them right away for you. Hello? Oh, hello, uh, operator. Could you get me state 7 2000, please, in Capital City? Yes, yes, that's right. All right, this is, uh, what's the number here, Doc? 214. Well, this is 214. Yes, that's right, 72,000. Have you called me back? Thank you. Well, you've been here two days now, and already you're calling the office. <laughs> Some vacation. Thanks, Doc. Doc, hmm? when did you say Esau brought Doris Hepburn up from Capital City? Oh, a little better than a year ago. Why? All right, Doc, I'll give it to you straight. I think there's a warrant outstanding for Doris Hepburn under another name. What are you talking about, Dave? Two young fellows were caught robbing a liquor store. There was a girl in the car who may or may not have been the lookout. Oh, not Doris. It couldn't have been Doris. Well, I certainly hope not. Hello? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, extension 620, please. Oh, hiya, Steve. Dave, you lucky dog. How does it feel to be a man of leisure? 
Why don't you find out? You can make it up here in three hours if you watch the speed limit. Grab yourself a weekend. You deserve it. I'll tell the commissioner you said so. Maybe you'll lend me a sleeping bag. Well, you never know. In the meantime, I want you to do me a favor. You remember that West End liquor store job? Yeah. And the girl we thought was driving the car? Yeah. Send me that photo of her, will you? Why, you got something? Well, I may have. Send me everything he got on. I care of Doc Hendricks, Sierra Blanca. Thought you were on a vacation. I thought so, too. Oh, uh, Steve, have the lab man retouch the photo so she comes out blonde, huh? Blonde? Send everything as soon as you can. Right away. I'll be seeing you. You might at that. Goodbye, Dave. So long, Steve. What happens? What happens, Dave, if it is Doris? Well, I take her in. Isn't that what you taxpayers put up your money for? I wonder. And I led you to her. Led you right into her house. I fixed her up good. Doc, somebody fixed Doris up long before you did. Who? Doris. What's the matter? Oh, just uh, let me rest you for a second. Will you? That last hill got me. I, I'm... You don't look so good. I'll be all right in a minute, I, I think. I... Maybe you'd better go back to the city where you got somebody to look after you. You never can tell what's liable to happen to a guy up here. Well, I, 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 I feel all limp inside. I, I, I don't know whether I could make it back to the city or not. <laughs> Cracked like an old plaster pitcher. First infection came along, hit him like a plague. Virus pneumonia. Can be simple, can be serious. In this case, it's serious. What can we do? Well, I wouldn't like to move him. The nearest hospital's over 100 miles from here. Moving him there might make it touch and go. I'd rather keep the odds more favorable where I can. I'll take care of him. You ever had any nursing experience? Yes. Might be day and night for both of us. It's a crisis anyway. I know. I can still move him. You're home, Esau. He can stay. Doc, anything I can do? Do you have a Bible? Yeah. Read it.
been, Doc. <laughs> you tell me. I was scared a couple times, I know that. Me too. It's all right now, Dave. Thanks to a lot of heart, a lot of prayer, and a lot of woman. Doris, I, I, uh, I can't seem to remember anything but Doris. She must have spent every minute with me. She didn't miss many. I gave her a pill yesterday afternoon. She's still sleeping. How can I ever repay? You can't, Dave. If you had a million dollars and gave it to her, you'd still owe her a lot. Oh. Incidentally, here's a letter that came for you while you were sick. You know, one of the things I remember about the girl we're looking for is... she'd been a student nurse. Goodbye, Dave. Doc, wait a minute. What do you expect me to do? Be glad that you're still alive. all this. You leaving? Yes, I thought I'd leave later this afternoon. Ah, oh, gee, Dave. What you have to go back to the city for? I have to work for a living, Maddie. Work? That must be terrible. Say, I was thinking. What's that, Maddie? When you first came here, you started to tell my mommy's fortune. But you never finished. Oh, now, Maddie, please. Wait a minute, Doris. I think maybe I want to hear that fortune, too. Say, I remember in a movie once, there was this fortune teller. He was like an Indian with a thing around his head, a towel or something. And he wouldn't tell the person's fortune because he was afraid it was going to be bad. Did you see something bad in Mommy's fortune? Well, uh, Maddie, fortunes are funny things. It stopped! Boys! Hi, Doc. Here's an old friend of yours, Dave. Hello, Dave. Hi, Steve. I made it. The commissioner gave me the weekend, but he wouldn't give me a sleeping bag. Well, Steve, this is Mrs. Hepburn, Steve O'Brien, Doris. How do you do? How do you do? And Mr. Hepburn, see? How do you do? How are you? The rest of the family. You a friend of Dave's? Yeah. yeah I'm a real good friend of Dave's. We're partners. Yeah? Gee, that's great. Dave's real smart. He tells fortunes. He does, huh? He, he looks in the fire and... Now, Maddie, you can tell Mr. O'Brien about the fortune telling some other time. Here, fellas, come on to the kitchen. Help me, huh? Let me have your things. Thanks, Doc. I hear you were sick. Doc tells me we almost lost you. Yeah, I was on the short end there for a while, but Mrs. Hepburn fixed that. Well, excuse me. Certainly. Three men in the kitchen. I understand just what you mean. When do you think you're going to leave? Come on outside. I want to talk to you. Excuse me, Doc. Yeah. Ah, it sure is beautiful up here. Well, it's real nice. It's too bad. What is it? Mrs. Hepburn. Doc told me all about it. How much she did for you. It's gonna make it tough to take her in. You got my letter. Yeah? Well, she's a girl. No. Oh, come on. I spotted her the minute I stepped into the room. I mean it, she's not the girl. But Dave, the photograph. That girl in there is not the same person in the photograph. She doesn't live the same way, think the same way. Her whole life is different. She's happily married with a couple of wonderful kids. And she saved your life? Yes, she saved my life. Me, the guy who could wreck everything she has. Dave, I know how you feel. I don't think you do. All right, maybe I don't. I'm just a cop. But there's one thing I do know. That girl in there is wanted on suspicion, and no matter what you say, you can't change that. Well, I'm not taking her in. 
You're not going to take her in. What do you have to say about it? What did you do while you were up here? Rewrite the criminal code? Doris Hepburn is not a criminal. Oh, Dave Robinson says she's not a criminal, so she's not. Just like that. Case dismissed, huh? Oh, come on, Dave. You're a cop, remember? This isn't a personal matter between you and Doris Hepburn. Her crime's against the state, the community, the law, the way... I know the words. You should. You taught them to me. You decided to move into the DA's office? I have. Well, what are you going to do when you move in there if you don't take the girl in now? Make up the rules as you go along? Well, why not, if they're good rules? Ah, Dave. Steve, no correctional institution could improve on what Doris Hepburn has done for herself. Whether she's guilty or not, she's paid for it. Waiting two years to be discovered. Waiting for someone to tap her on the shoulder and say, I arrest you in the name of the law. What law? Law that says you got to lock her up until she can return to society as a good citizen? That's the book. Well, then show me a better citizen than Doris Hepburn. Oh, Steve, I, I, I'm not talking about changing any laws. Well, what are you talking about? Well, I'm just trying to say the law cannot be black or white. It wouldn't work that way. There's got to be room for understanding, tolerance, compassion, forgiveness. But that's not up to you. Well, who says the rules can't be changed? The book. Well, there's another book with some pretty good rules, ten of them. Dave, we can't be concerned with moral considerations. Well, if we can't, we're lousy cops. Now, I'm going to go inside and pack. You make up your own mind. Goodbye, Mr. and Mrs. Hepburn. I'm sorry my visit was such a short one, but I'd sure like to come back again and stay for a while. You'll be welcome any time. Manny, I got a little unfinished business with you. I never did complete your mother's fortune. That's right, you didn't. Well, here it is, Manny. I see nothing but happiness ahead for your mommy. Nothing to worry about. Nothing but a bright, shining future with a wonderful man for a husband and a couple of wonderful boys. Why are you crying, Mommy? That's a wonderful fortune. <laughs> These are happy tears, Manny. Very happy tears. Well, goodbye, everybody. Hope to see you real soon. Goodbye, Dave. Thanks. Bye, Dave. Doc? Bye, Dave. Best patient I ever had. Steve, you're a better cop than I thought you were. Gonna buy you dinner on the way in. Might even buy you a drink. No. I'll buy you one. <laughs> 